Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to The Ray Taylor Show, where I bring you the reviews of the latest movies and TV shows, as well as classic and foreign films. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and on this podcast, I'll be talking about all things film and television. Whether you're looking for a new show to binge or want to know if that blockbuster is worth the trip to the theater or just want to hear my thoughts on a classic or foreign film, I've got you covered. So join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes and let's dive into the world of film and television together. On today's episode, I am talking about the new movie on Netflix, El Conde, which stands for The Count, stands for, which translates to The Count, uh, this came out this year, 2023, directed by Pablo Lorraine, I believe, written by Guillermo Calderon and Pablo Lorraine, and starring Jamie Vidal. In this movie, it centers on Augusto Pinoche, 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 who is not dead, but an aged vampire after living 250 years in th- in this world. He has decided to die once and for all. Overall, I loved a lot about this movie. Uh, But the writing ultimately spoiled what could have been an epic movie, in my opinion. Maybe if I had watched more of the movies by the director, uh, I would have gotten the vibe of it. But uh, Moments gave me kind of Wes Anderson vibes, which I like. I don't mind that. It is kind of weird. I was watching... What was I watching? I was watching Bong Joon-ho. No, it was uh, Park Chan-wook. I was watching Park Chan-wook. I think it was Revenge for Miss Vengeance. Mrs. Vengeance uh, has a lot of Wes Anderson vibes. And that's a very weird movie to have Wes Anderson vibes. Uh, This movie, there's aspects of the dialogue the writing that that gave me the wes anderson vibes but a lot of it felt also like yorgos lanthimos uh probably a lot more like yorgos lanthimos the guy who did the lobster or uh i just killing of a sacred deer very interesting a guy that i appreciated more when i watched all of his movies together to do a an episode of top five Uh, months ago and he's a guy that has very interesting very stylized dialogue and it's very weird he's a very weird has a very unique style he also did the favorite which he didn't write uh, but I think is probably I, I think that may have been my favorite of his I don't remember what how I ranked his movies but I definitely liked the favorite a lot more after having seen all of his other films uh, but definitely this movie has Yorgos Lanthimos vibes. So if, you, you know, if you're a fan of Yorgos Lanthimos films, uh, then you may really enjoy this. Um, you know, which, you know, Yorgos Lanthimos, Wes Anderson, directors I appreciate. Definitely appreciate them more after I see their films back to back. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend this movie uh, to anyone unless they are that kind of particular fan of movies if they particularly like those kinds of strange interesting unique films that have very unique dialogue uh and acting and writing but visually this movie was amazing uh i loved the aesthetic of this film it's black and white for 99 percent of it uh a lot of it especially in the opening a lot of close-ups shallow depth of field uh, the beginning of it, a great blend of kind of art house and supernatural. Um, but eventually I just didn't know what was going on. There were moments at least where I didn't know what was going on as new characters come into the story and things, different things start happening. I just like, I don't, what is going on? Um, ultimately, like, you know, I figured out for the most part, it just tonally this movie kind of felt all over the place. Like, part of it is, like, like a beautiful visual style with supernatural elements, obviously a vampire. There is some graphic violence in moments. And then there's this really dry sense of humor in this movie as well. 
So it's like all of those different tones and and ingredients don't really mix well for me in this movie anyway. But the premise of this movie is super interesting. It's it's basically like what if a fascist dictator was a vampire? Uh, that va fascist dictator was Augusto Pinot, who was uh, a Chilean army general who seized power in a military coup in 1973. He toppled the democratically elected socialist president, Salvador Allende. Uh, following the coup, Pinot established a military dictatorship that ruled Chile until 1990. And let me tell you, if you would be surprised that the United States helped to overthrow, helped in that coup, then you would be right. Because that's that's kind of what America does a lot of times. That's that's why there's this idea, especially conservatives have this like one of their their many delusional ideas is that like socialism doesn't work and that like any time there's a socialist uh, leader somewhere, uh, it fails and it fails every time because the United States contributes to the coup that is responsible for replacing that dick that socialist democratically elected socialist leader and that's what happened in this movie and that is our vampire which i'm not very knowledgeable about history let alone history from other countries you know it's uh it's a blind spot in my in my life in my education of the things that i know but so maybe i would have gotten more out of this movie if i was more familiar with that that uh dictator but uh you know it it is what it is it's not a big part of it but there's definitely the beginning of this movie is kind of that setup seeing where this vampire came from because most of it is him as a very old guy um which is also interesting you know he's a really old guy he hates his five kids who really only care about money it's like obviously right all the kids were born into wealth and are you know don't know how to work or earn money i mean similarly to most rich kids most people that come from wealth they they have this like delusional thought that they're like somehow self-made like you have elon musk and and uh the amazon guy and bill gates and like all these people who like claim to have come from nothing yet all were born into wealth born into connections and money it's just it's it's so ridiculous um and you know the same reason the same thing with these kids they don't they don't claim to be self-made in any way but they're they're definitely you know leeches they they want daddy's money uh and because of that he wants to die right so kind of dark comedy it, it's funny I, I like maybe if they didn't include the historical tie-in with him being a a fascist dictator uh who's like w w life goal i guess as a vampire is to topple liberal and socialist uh movements in the world uh you know making him a very unlikable guy but then you know he has these horrible kids that are very even more unlikable because they are like just useless parasites i don't know uh, so the part parts of that are why I, I didn't really connect with this movie. Um, but definitely a movie where everyone involved has their own goals, has their own selfish desires, uh, which, you know, is it, it's hard to like. I want to like these characters. I want to like the main character. I want to like the, the main vampire guy. But I can't. I can't because he's a fucking he's a fascist. He's, he's a horrible. He's a monster aside from the supernatural aspect of him being a vampire making him a monster if he was a human being which in real life that the guy he is based on was a real human being right trump somebody who literally tried to overthrow a democratic election to install himself has plans to install himself as a dictator to make the executive branch of the united states government all powerful is something they openly admit to wanting to do is a real person like there's no out of him being oh he's a vampire which kind of feels like 
I don't know. It's just it, it it's a weird thing. And I'm myself not necessarily the biggest vampire movie fan. I'm very picky when it comes to vampire movies. I'm very picky when it comes to war movies, which has a lot to do with political figures um, doing things, right? Very picky with these those types of genres. So having those genres in this make it tough. And a big part of that, not only just the vampire aesthetic, but also the movies that use the Christian or Catholic religion as if it's a real thing that actually has real world effects on things i'm not a big fan of those movies either and I'll, there's a big chunk of horror movies that kind of have that christian religion is real kind of a thing right exorcist movies obviously um this um you know many many of them and and it's usually a, a downside for me because like i don't like there's like those religions make real life for a lot of people a living hell uh so just turning them into some fantasyful thing uh doesn't necessarily help me particularly get into the movie let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about attention, attention. All, all ray, ray taylor, taylor show, show fans, fans. We're excited to announce we've just released a line of exclusive merchandise featuring original artwork inspired by the show. Our high-quality shirts and biodegradable phone cases are a perfect way to show your support for the show and make a great gift for any fan. Plus, with each purchase, you'll be helping us continue to bring you great content. So don't wait. Head on over to InspireDisorder.com now and check out the full collection. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll show your support by grabbing some Ray Taylor Show merchandise today. And now, let's get back to the show. I do want to get into spoilers, talk about specific moments and things that I liked and didn't like of this movie. I really wanted to like this movie. I like and starting off I'm like watching the beginning of this movie I'm like this might be my favorite movie of the year. This might be on my top 5 movies of 2023 that I will record in January. Um but then the middle part of this movie really didn't like and then it gets better at the end but um definitely a movie I really wanted to like and had uh was hopeful but ultimately disappointed. Uh, but let me get into spoilers, talk about those specific stuff. So if you don't want to hear the spoilers for this movie, this movie just came out on Netflix. If you have Netflix, who doesn't have Netflix, really? Um, unless you lost access to Netflix recently. Um, but it's on Netflix, so go over there to check it out and come back if you want to hear my thoughts. But for those that want to hear them and don't mind spoilers, here we go. Let's start off with some stuff I liked, right? The vampire story, surprisingly, I actually liked. I thought it was a very unique, very, like, super grounded. I mean, just to see the vampire stuff filmed and displayed in this very beautiful way, this black and white, just, like, the compositions are great, you know, kind of feels like in many ways, almost like an A24 horror movie, like the Vivich or, or those types of movies where it's like the visual aesthetic is really good. And then there's also the supernatural element. So many amazing shots in this, the kind of origin story for this vampire. We see him. He's an orphan, right? Doesn't know whose parents are grows up in an orphanage eventually as he gets older bites a prostitute uh and then there's a scene there's this great scene where these other prostitutes and a priest come in and they're going to kill him like the priest has a, a wooden stake and the prostitutes are going to hold him down but then the priest gets the stake under you know stabbed under his chin and then one of the prostitutes just gets her head bashed in very graphically bashed in and you see her laying on the ground, and it, you see multiple shots of this giant mallet that this vampire guy has bashing her, and it looks like a caved-in skull. And it's like, so I'm watching this movie, and I'm like, 
interesting aesthetic. None of the comedy stuff has shown up yet, unless you've got really messed up sense of humor. But you have, right, you have the the super graphic bashing of the skull, kind of an action-y moment, very graphic. I'm like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be, like, unlike anything. And it doesn't end up being that way for parts of it. But after that, we see he's in, like, France. Marie Antoinette, I believe, gets uh, beheaded. Her head gets, uh, you know, in the guillotine. And the kind of presentation after her head gets chopped off is very gnarly. Uh, which, it, it's surprisingly many beheadings in this movie. Uh, but the scene that happens right after the beheading where he goes to, after everything's cleared out, he goes to lick the blood off the guillotine. I was like, this movie is, um, like, amazing. Like, v the things that it's showing, the visual, the, the visual style of it, everything. I was like, I am totally in. Right? And I, I usually don't like movies that have, the, like I said, the Christianity, Catholicism, as if it's a real thing, as if God actually does anything to stop bad things from happening. But in this movie, another aspect that I loved towards the end of the movie, right, you have this nun who does her, like, the, she's, she's the accountant, and she's doing, like, she's there for multiple purposes she's there to get money as it, the kids are as well she's trying to help the kids find money but she's actually finding it for the churches but then also she's there because she's got to quote unquote kill the devil right which the devil is in this vampire guy um so she does her whole jesus thing this 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 cult ceremony thing right and like done, doing all her cult stuff to do to exercise the devil from this guy, from this vampire. But not only does it not do shit, right? It's this scene where it's like, okay, where this is like the crossroads for me with this movie. Like this movie could go into the world of like, oh, God is almighty and he actually does good stuff. Or it could go the other direction, which it does, which is like not only did that not do anything. But she ends up, like, there's another scene in between it, but almost basically cuts to uh, her having sex with the vampire and then asking him to bite her. I was like, that's amazing. Like, that made me like the movie again. Because I was like, ah, because like, there's a chunk in the middle where she's doing her investigative stuff that is just very much remind me of Wes Anderson, but, like, not in a good way. You know? So... Which is funny when he does bite her because he's never even bitten his own wife, which she's complained about, which is another... There's a lot of different characters doing a lot of different things in this movie, right? So I like that God is as useless as he is in real life. So, and anybody that has a problem with me saying that should really look into how many priests and youth pastors do the most evil things to children, right? If God was going to do something good, I would, ass I would assume he wouldn't want that evil, those evil things do it happening in his house by the people that do his work. Maybe he should start there with cleaning house. If, if morality was bestowed upon people who believed in a religion, I would imagine those people would be some of the most moral people, but they tend to be some of the most evil people. So forgive me if I don't believe God does anything uh, good in reality, in the reality I'm living in. Uh, but anyway, her learning after she's bitten, kind of like the next scene after that, another one that I love, is her learning how to fly. All of the flying scenes in this are amazing. Are amazing. Like, I would almost want this director to do a Superman movie. I loved all the flying scenes and her learning to fly after being bitten is like beautiful. It's, it's just so beautiful. Like so many scenes in this, there's so much beauty in this movie and like obviously very gruesome, disgusting aspects as well. But man, uh, other aspects that I kind of liked 
Uh, if anybody's a fan of Eve Six or the band Eve Six may love this movie because I gotta say there's a lot of uh, hearts in blenders, right? As the vampires love to make heart shakes, they put hearts in blenders and blend them up and drink them. Uh, and of course, the Eve Six songs "Heart in a Blender," uh, which I don't know if that's the name of the song, but if you're if you're a millennial, y- you know what I'm talking about. So I, I kind of like that. Uh, which is also part of the world building. The fact that like he's a, very much a connoisseur of the different blood people pr- produce depending on their lifestyles, where they live, uh, and you know, kind of goes. In. I really liked the world building that happens in this movie. Uh, the scene where he tells his kids that he had that he found, or he like he's got this whole thing, right? The kids want the money. They show up. And he's kind of like losing his memory, right? Whether he's pretending or not, he wants to die. Uh, but they, so they're there. They want to find out where his investments are before he dies, because of course that's all they care about is his money. But he he tells them that like the investments are in the basement, and he has a servant, as all vampires do, that loves him and does everything for him. And he's standing there, and the servant says that he loves this man like i love you uh whatever his name is i forget the actual character's name the count i love you count and then you see all of the kids like realize that like they should probably be saying that to their father as well and they slowly kind of do their own version of that which i thought that was kind of funny but then there's like a marching band comes in while he kind of stands up and slow dances with his wife clearly didn't happen it's just like such a weird random thing that happens out of nowhere and doesn't fit with anything let's take a quick break from this episode because i want to promote are you looking for a way to take your love of the ray taylor show to the next level look no further than inspired disorder plus as a member you'll get access to a whole host of amazing perks including the full week of shows ad free in both audio and video versions a live painting archive early access to the many faces members only discounts and deals a podcast back catalog with over 600 episodes but that's not all as a member you'll get access to my personal blog as well as my creative writing you'll also get the chance to ask me anything you want with all of these benefits and more inspired disorder plus is a must have for any fan of the ray taylor show so don't wait go sign up now head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and start enjoying all of the amazing perks of the membership and now let's get back to the show i love the definitely love the way this movie is shot the world building i love like i said they them keeping frozen hearts in a cellar almost like uh a vampire prepper you know down in their cellar they got all this kind of backup food for when you know times are tough uh and the different kinds of hearts they like tell you like the vampire heart is the best that that's the one that makes them young again and then like young people's hearts are better than old people's hearts women's hearts are better than men's uh lazy people are more delicious than hard workers you know all that that i love all that stuff you know the the different connoisseur the different types of uh the breakdown of his preferences when it comes to whose blood he likes to drink and all that The narrated backstory of the old man who's a vampire, then you see, like, there's this moment where you're just after you get the whole backstory of him in the towards the beginning, and then you see the old man who the backstory was for, at least you think it is, and then he just flies away is a beautiful scene as well. Like, every time a person kind of just lifts off to fly, which there's only a few, um, it's amazing and to see the different scenes as he's like flying there's one where he's like flying through a city and it's a top-down view of like and he's wearing he's wearing like a cape he's almost like batman he has a bat suit there's a scene where he goes to put on his bat suit which is really his old military suit from when he was a a military dictator that happens to have a cape on it It, it, like i do love so much of that 
aesthetic of this movie and kind of how everything is everything makes sense like the, the the whole world that is is created is i really enjoy like the the thing i really just didn't like was the when the nun who is a an accountant good with numbers she shows up to investigate and find these investments for the kids but she knows that he's a vampire. The kids know that she knows that he's a vampire. But then she's also there and open with the kids about killing him. But then they know he wants to die anyway. Like that whole situation when she's interviewing the kids is so confusing and unnecessary. And I think if they had done everything, everybody could have had their own motives. But like i don't know it just it really took me out that that middle section of this movie um just a lot going on which i guess i'll get into the stuff i didn't write like right the the nun f trying to find the assets um and then part of it i that i kind of do like is that he starts falling in love with her because she's young She's a young, beautiful woman. So he starts having second thoughts about wanting to die. Meanwhile, it's just, I don't know, just the writing of all that middle stuff I just didn't like. Um, you know, stuff that could have been better, I, I would say. Like his kids, you know, making him want to die. I enjoyed that aspect of it the the aspect but it's just like kind of a small part his wife sneaking blood into his food food to keep him alive i like that but like i don't know it's just like there's a lot of these throwaway moments that i like but ultimately just kind of are come out of nowhere um and then him wanting to you know live once he sees the the accountant nun um then after like at the very end after the kids have loaded up what's left right like after you know he leaves with his mom the books are the the valuable thing the kids take everything because they don't know what's valuable so they just take like the furniture and silverware and shit and <clears throat> you see the nuns show up like the the whole army of nuns show up to like investigate and steal his money and his investments right then try to kill him right because he's the devil the whole nun squad that shows up at the end uh after everything's cleared out like it's an interesting idea but it's such a minor subplot that ends up just going nowhere the whole thing with his mom coming back is very weird also so we find out who his mom is right that she was bitten and impregnated by a by a vampire um and she gave her kid up she she put her you know got rid of her kid um so that's why he grew up in an orphanage <clears throat> right and it's like an interesting thing that's just kind of thrown in at the end and you find out that that's the woman that's been narrating the entire film and also we find out that she was part of his story despite never telling him who she was but there were moments as he was coming up the ranks um, in previous lives of his uh, where she was involved. She knew it was him. So it's like it's an interesting aspect. Again, another interesting aspect that just feels tacked on at the end. So the side there's a side love story between his assistant and his wife. That just is another kind of side thing. Uh, and the assistant agrees to bite her and turn her if he vows to kill him but of course that never happens all the beheadings and stuff were pretty great um so th this movie in all a lot of interesting ingredients right comes together i would say in a very underwhelming way right get rid of the comedy stuff get rid of like the whole all of the stuff with the nun investigating all of the conversations she has with the kids don't need any of that so much of the the all of the, when it gets dialogue heavy when there's a lot of back and forth it, it's the worst part of this movie i would say 
but there's definitely some truly amazing moments uh but it's just kind of surrounded by or just a lot of amazing moments and visuals with like these chunks of mediocrity throughout right in some ways it feels like style ups over substance where the style of it i loved and some of the substance i loved as well as like as far as the world building but ultimately the substance wasn't as well put together as the style of it right better director i would say than writer which he is one of the co-writers but i do i it's a movie where i would like to visit his other movies right maybe i'll do a top five of this director's movies and maybe if i dove into his work and got his vibe i would appreciate this movie more because i really did want to love this music movie it's visually it's amazing it had moments of magic but ultimately just not enough um so that's my thoughts on el conde but uh you know let me know what you think about it but thank you all for tuning in to the ray taylor show i do hope you enjoyed my thoughts on el conde don't forget to tune in every monday wednesday and friday for more movie and tv show reviews and join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or over on youtube.com slash inspired disorder until next time enjoy the show subscribe to the ray taylor show on youtube and everywhere podcasts are found binge the full week ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus purchase ray taylor show merch over at inspireddisorder.com have a wonderful day everybody peace out today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about everything that you've been wanting every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real dreams can come true what you manifest in your mind you can bring to reality